Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news of, about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his field. Jesus had compassion over the multitudes, not because they had problems, but because they didn't have a shepherd. They didn't have a pastor. The Bible says that he gave gifts, and part of the gifts are pastors. You know, the Bible says it gives apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors. And every one of those gifts are there for the perfecting of the saints, for the building up of the body. And so because they didn't have a pastor, Jesus could only take them so far. He could heal their body at the time they were together. He could speak to them about the kingdom at the time that they were together. Whether it was a few hours or days, he only had that time together to be able to minister to their needs and help them and give them a little insight of what the kingdom of heaven is like. But then at the end of all that work and at the end of all those that ministering to, ministering to them, the word of God says that he was sad because he knew he was going to walk away and the great multitude were going to be without a shepherd, without a pastor. Sheep without a shepherd are sheep that the things of the world can influence. Wolves can rise up and kill them. Dogs and, and other animals can rise up and hurt them. They, 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 they run what, without direction and they, they have no vision. They, have, they don't know what to do. And so without a shepherd, they would just basically end up dying. Not being able to grow, not being able to multiply, not being able to be strong. But when we have a shepherd, especially when the Lord is your shepherd, you will not want. The word of God says that the shepherd will lead you to green grass, to still waters. He will guard your soul. He will make sure that anything that tries to come against you with a rod and a staff, he will protect you. And that even in the midst of the darkest valley, he'll be there with you. When I was in South Africa, I got an opportunity to go to the villages. And they, this, it's exactly the way you can imagine. It was a village that was uh, part of a tribe. And the, 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 the houses were, were houses that they'd probably been living that way for for. 500 years and I was there and you could just see the beautiful grass but then I saw this one man and he was a shepherd and as he was walking the sheep would follow him he probably had a thousand sheep but this one man was able to take the sheep wherever he wanted to go there's a difference between a, sh a shepherd and a hireling there's a difference between someone who is with the sheep and is leading the sheep to green pastures and is guiding their and guarding their hearts and someone who, who is just taking care of them because they're paid to do that. The sheep knew this man. So wherever this man walked, the sheep went with him. He walked to the left, the sheep went to the left. A thousand of them. He went to the right, a thousand will walk with him. He walked with the sheep. The Bible talks about a higher, he, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. But a stranger they will not know. Someone who is a stranger is someone that has to stand behind the sheep and beat the sheep to go into the direction that they must go. But someone that walks as a true shepherd, the sheep want to follow him because they know wherever he leads, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. They're going to be strong. They're, they're, they're on their way to green grass. They're on, rate, on their way to still waters. Amen. They know they got protection when the shepherd's around. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's something that... The, the question that we have today and the question I give to you and those that are watching is, are you a sheep without a shepherd? Are you a sheep without a shepherd? And someone says, well, I'm offended that you call me a sheep. No, no, no. 
The Word of God calls you a sheep because God wants you to grow. He wants you to be, have a covering. He wants to, to be able to position you to have power and strength and to grow and to be fruitful in life, to have a blessed life. And he knows that the only way you could get there is if you had a covering of someone who takes spiritual responsibility of praying for you, of preaching to you, of encouraging you and correcting you. You say, well, well, pastor, I, I, I'm my own man. I don't need correction. Well, you, then you're not, a shep, you're not a sheep under a shepherd's covering. And, you know, whatever comes your way, you better be strong enough to deal with it. Whatever comes attacking your family, you better be strong enough to deal with it. You're living for yourself. You're not living for the Lord. Because a person who has given their life to the Lord surrenders themselves to God. You have to, you have to die to who you are to live for him. He died for you so that you can live. And we surrender to God to say, God, here I am. Whatever mess I am, I come to you, Lord. But I love you, God, and I need your help. And then he comes and he saves you. He forgives you of all your sins. He restores your soul. He, he heals your broken heart. He shows you his glory. And then he gives you divine purpose and destiny. There is a path that we all must walk and Jesus is walking before us. But if we chose to not follow him and go to the right or to the left, we cannot blame him for our troubles when we chose not to follow him. There are a lot of people that don't have a shepherd, so they got a lot of issues in their life. They got a lot of struggles in their life, a lot of problems in their life. Listen, whether you are saved or not saved, whether you have a shepherd or you don't have a shepherd, you're going to have problems and you're going to have issues. There's a storm coming your way. You might be in one and there's another one coming your way again. There's going to be a struggle. But when you have a shepherd, you have help from heaven. You have a covering that the storm might come, but it will not touch you. Amen. It will not come near you. It will not destroy you. The Bible says only with your eyes will you see the reward of the wicked. When you are the righteous, that is not your portion, the, the, that, that destruction. You have life in you, the life of God. But you got to follow the path. You got to let the, the shepherd, you got to let the good shepherd lead you. And what the good shepherd does is he rises up men and women like myself and he speaks to you and says, That's your pastor. None of us choose a pastor, God tells us who he is or who she is. As much as I, you know, I could do all the marketing in the world and we could, we could have 10,000 people in here, but they're only here because of the marketing. They're only here because, you know, the world knows how to move people. I saw this, 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 one, this one girl who, who released a new album, a secular album, and it wasn't a coincidence that she was in a movie, that she wrote a book, and she came out with an album, each one in stages. Why? Because the world wanted this girl to be a selling point, so they made sure they put her in front of eyes as much as you can. I mean, commercial after commercial, promoting her over and over. She is just a brand that, that they're making her be. Why? Because they know that if they create a brand and they put all their efforts in one area and they just have one person that has a little bit of talent, they could draw masses to them. Because it's all math. It's all manipulation. It's all marketing. Next thing you know, everybody's listening. Everybody's watching. Everybody is saying that, that this person is the greatest thing. But I tell you, the same devils that brought her to there are the same devils that are going to go to somewhere else and drop her like, like nothing. And that, that person, you'll see the end of their days will be so addicted. They'll see, be broken. They will be manipulated. And they'll be a victim. They, they will have all these reasons to, to claim that they, they, they are... They, have been taken advantage of. But yet they signed themselves up for that. There are a lot of people that want to make a church like that to draw as many people as possible through the manipulation. But listen, we don't need to play those games. We just need to pray and, and worship the Lord and let God bring his sheep and let God bring the ones that he wants as a shepherd. I learned a long time ago that as a shepherd, it takes work. Every one of you, I pray for you. 
I see what God is doing in your life. I'm so excited. If you come in here, you might, you might have come like the, the worst person where people have rejected you, our society doesn't want you, your family might have given up on you, but if you come in here, I don't see you as someone that is, that is defeated. I see you as someone on their way to victory. I see you as someone who God is going to use mightily for his glory. I see you what God, I see you as, as, as material that God can use. Many of you were in the hands of the devil when you first came. But once you got into the hand of God, you are a new creation, a brand new man. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become brand new. Amen. And so that's why I stay, I get so encouraged when I get to meet you and, and I get to know you and I get to pray with you. And then I start putting you around other brothers and sisters and encouraging you to get to know them and encouraging them to minister to you. And next thing you know, year after year, that person that was broken and beat up and destroyed has risen up to become a mighty person of honor and glory. The Lord has taken the shame off of their life and has made them into someone that the world says, that is someone I want to be like. All for the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor you're on your way. Amen. You're on your way. You're, just you being here, you're on your way to victory. Just you being here. You know, I, one of the, the blessings I had uh, of uh, this past uh, birthday, I, I made a challenge. I put on, on, on my Facebook page, I said, I said, I want to hear what God did through my life to bless you. That's all I said. And I was so amazed to hear all the wonderful testimonies. And many of them said, I don't even know where to begin. But one man, he's, you know, I've seen the Lord set him free. I've seen the Lord protect and, and guard his marriage. I've seen the Lord give him children when the, when the, the world said that he could not have children. I saw the Lord allow him to, to uh, finish college when no one in his family has ever finished college. And this man who was, who was so broken and on his way to death and was literally only by the grace of God who was alive, this man is now a pastor and a preacher of the gospel. And he shared a testimony. And, you know, that, that question, he says, he says, Pastor, I don't even know where to begin. But he said this, the one thing that he did say Every time I think about you, every time I think about what God has done through you, the one thing that I always remember is, suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> for you, you hear it's funny. But for him, when he was ready to quit, he heard that in his head. He heard that in, that became a louder voice than the devil that said, why don't you just die and give up? That stirred him back to the word of God that told him that he was a champion, that he was more than a conqueror. Amen. Without a shepherd, where will we be? Amen. That's why I'm so excited about you. I'm so excited about where, where you're at, and I know you're going to go even farther and greater. You might, you might have had one of the most greatest lives, but you are here, and we continue believing God for you that it's going to even be better. That at the end of the days, you're going to see thousands and thousands of souls come into the kingdom of God. Amen. You know, as a church, the we have a, 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 a vision and a mission. You know, we, we, our vision is, you know, for people to experience victory in life through faith in God. It's always about victory. It's never been, you know, this is not a consoling place. We console you with the things of God. And, you know, the presence of the Lord, it helps you. Amen. The presence of the Lord will console you. God, Jesus will wipe away your tears. Amen. But this is a place of victory. After you've been consoled, after you, you've had your wounds Healed a little bit, just get back up. Get back into the fight. The battle's not over, amen? The victory is yours in Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor you have victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And so we're building up your faith so that you can have victory no matter what fight comes your way. You're going to have victory. You're going to win, amen? It's just, you know, you're just not at the end of the game, but at the end of the game, you're going to win, amen? 
Hallelujah. And you can't give up. You just got to keep on going because that's where you're at, through faith in God. I can't see the victory, but I can see Jesus and his word. I can see his promises. So I will have victory. I will have victory. That's, that's where I am headed. That's where I'm going. That's who I am. I'm more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. The problem comes, I'm more than a conqueror. The situation comes, I'm more than a conqueror. No matter what, I'm going to have victory. Amen. Hallelujah. That's just, that, that's just a promise. That's, that's God's word. It's going to happen in my life in Jesus' name. Amen. And then, you know, as a mission, what we do and how we do it, we disciple the church to change their world. Right now you're being discipled in the ways of God so that your world can change. If you don't like what's happening in your house, get ready. Your house is going to change. If you don't like what's happening in your city, get ready. The city's going to change. But it's as you grow, as you are changed, your environment will change around you. Amen? Amen? And so that's what we do. I remember when the Lord, I had a spiritual encounter with the Lord for him to make me a pastor. You know, I just, I just wanted God. I just wanted him. You know, I would have been, been happy just continue to work in the TV ministry or sitting in the chair, not preaching. I would have been happy. I would have. I'm telling you, I, th this is the, the thing that I, ne I never asked God for this. He had to bring me here kicking and screaming. He really did. I, 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 I tried to give it to everybody else. I wasn't a preacher. I was just the only one that was still here. But I remember when the Lord grabbed a hold of me one day, I came to service, and I was sitting in the front right over here, and about a half hour before the first service, the Spanish service began, the Spirit of God came upon me and, and just glued me to the floor, and I just weeped and wailed and wailed and wailed. For four hours, I wailed and wailed and wailed. And I don't even know how to explain it. I mean, it's, it's kind of difficult. And as I explain it, you're going to look at me weird and think weird about me. But I felt like there was, I'm trying to do this. And I felt like only women would know this. <laughs> I felt like I had milk that they needed to eat and I could not give it to them. That's what I felt. I felt that God had put something in me for them, but I could not give it to them because I wasn't the pastor. I wasn't the minister, but the Lord was doing a work in me. And when they made me pastor, you know, there was all sorts of, of obstacles we went through. It had been easier for me to do something new or something else or even start a new church, but, but that's not what God told me to do. God made me pastor, and I said, Lord, as long as you're here, I'll be here. You know, we, we've faced obstacles fi financially, obstacles physically, obstacles in every area. You can imagine, but I remember this one pastor. He told me about two years after I began pastoring, he said, he said, Pastor Kevin, when I found out that you became pastor of Faith Pleases God Church, I began to think about the big building and the people that would go through it. And I got a little jealous. I said, God, I've been, long, I've been a pastor longer than this guy. I've been more faithful as a pastor than this guy. Why did you make him pastor of that big church and not me? He got a little jealous. And then he said, I began to think about all the people that you're going to minister to. And then all the problems they were going to have. And then I started feeling sorry for you, and I found myself praying for you. Someone says, I want to be a pastor. You don't know what you're getting into. Amen. But the thing about being a pastor, the Lord connects you. When I, lay, when I, when I get on my face to pray, God reminds me about you. When I pray in the spirit, the Lord is speaking through me for you. When I stand up here to preach a, a message, 
It's the word for you. When I see you and I just tell you one thing, it was a word directed from heaven for you. Why? Because God needs someone that can love them the way he loves them. A pastor is all about love. If you don't have love for, for people, you're not a pastor. You are someone playing a religious game. And you, they will not grow. It's not about the numbers. It's about the fruit in the lives of the people. If, they, if, if you're, they're walking in victory, if they're happy and they're growing with God and they're taking territory for the glory of God, oh, you got a strong church. You got a strong church. But, it, but if they're walking defeated, broken, if they're always, and, and there's no change, and there's no transformation, then, then you've just been playing the game. Religion and tradition. Amen. The question is, though, who is your pastor? Are you connected or are you a visitor? Are you growing in the body of Christ or you just come in when you're hungry? There's one thing to be in the house and a part of the house and working to see the vision of the house established in the land while you are alive. And another thing of just coming because you're hungry. And then you get filled and then you leave and we don't see you for another six months until you're hungry again. I heard one man say, say it's, it's important that you don't become keisters. Christians only come during Easter <laughs> and Christmas. You need a pastor. You need to know, you need to know the ministry. Listen, we're going to do some things to get closer, not just closer to me, but closer as a body. We're going to start meeting in homes. We're going to start coming over your house to eat food, and we're going to invite you to come over our house and eat our food. Amen. We're going to get to know each other because this world is changing so much that the, the, it's like there's storms all around, and they're calling things that are truths untruths and things that are untrue as true. And now our, our kids are confused. We are confused. Why? Because we walked the away from the word of God and we don't know the truth. The truth sets us free. We need a man or a woman of God preaching the gospel to us. We need someone praying for us. We need someone that God has elevated and anointed and said this is a pastor. You can follow them as they follow me and you'll follow them into the life and victory. Amen. The one thing I love about right now is we got to get close. There's, there's, no, there's no other choice. There's no other choice because if we don't get close and we don't encourage each other, we're just going to die. We're going to be beat up. We're going to be broken because the things of the world will, will, will attack your mind, will attack your heart. And if it doesn't attack you, attack your children. If it doesn't attack your children, attack your wife or your husband. If it doesn't attack them, attack your city and your community. If we're going to see the kingdom of God established in Harlingen, Texas, we have to be united. We have to get close. Get ready for some more things we're going to be talking about in discipleship. It's coming quickly, amen. amen. Hallelujah. You're going to know your pastors. You're going to know your ministers. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let me just talk about a pastor. Three things. A pastor loves and ministers to the people. Number two, a pastor raises them up to victory. Number three, a pastor sends them to help others. As we are growing in the things of God, I'm going to love you. And the pastors of this church are going to love you. If you like it or not, we're going to love you. If you look at us and you say, these guys are weird, yes, we're weird because that's the kind of weirdness that needs to love you. Sometimes we got to be extra nice because inside of us we're thinking, do we want to be nice? No, we got to be nice. We got to be nice. Amen. Hallelujah. But it's about, as, we, as we walk with God, because understand this. When I minister to you the things of God, when I pray and minister to you, I'm not ministering to you. I'm ministering to Jesus. If you are homeless and, and, and I minister to you, I'm ministering to Jesus. If you're hurting and broken, I'm not ministering to you. I'm ministering to Jesus. Jesus says when you do it for the least, you do it unto me. Amen. And so the reason why I'm, I'm nice and kind and, 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 and I want to get to know you and grow with you is because I don't see you. I see Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at you and say, see Jesus in me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then we're going to send you and launch you into purpose. We're always going to encourage you to grow. We're always going to encourage you. You might be 92 years old, ending 
close to the end of your life, and we'll be telling you, go and win someone to Jesus today. Go and do something great for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Amen. And so we're always going to encourage you to grow. We're always going to send you out. Some of you will say, well, well, Pastor, I've never done it. Well, today's a new day. You get to do it today. I've never told anybody about Jesus. Well, you get to do it today. I've never prayed for anybody. Well, praise God, you get to do something new. Amen. Hallelujah. And so as pastors, we're going to encourage you to grow. Amen. And so are you connected? Are you connected? There are a lot of people that they, they'll come and ask for, for guidance and, and prayer. And one of the things I ask them, I ask them is, I say, who's your pastor? And when you ask them, who's your pastor, they say, well, I go to that church. I didn't ask you if you go to a church. I said, who's your pastor? Listen, I might be Pastor Kevin, but I love my family. I love my wife. I don't always have all the time for everybody, but we raise up other ministers and other pastors. And so they might, you might not get to pray with me all the time, but there's other men and women of God that are in this church that love you and that have the heart of God. And so we have a, we have a good body. And they pray and they preach with anointing of God. Amen. You have pastors. You're not by, tell your neighbor, I have a pastor. If you came to the church just because, oh, well, I heard this guy's exciting. I heard this, the praise and worship team. You know, I heard, you know, this and that. You know, Pastor Kevin's so handsome. I just came to see him. Why, why, why did you laugh? <laughs> Whatever reason you came for, if God did not call you here, you need to be where God called you to be. I love your visit. I love I pray with you. I minister to you. I, I, I want God's best for you. But if you're not called to be in the fellowship, praise God. When me and Veronica came back from Florida, the first thing we wanted to do is just to walk into the church. Because as soon as we walk in the church, it was like, <sighs> I'm home. This is more home than my house. You are my family. When they, came, when they came to Jesus and said, hey, your brothers are calling for you, he says, who's my brothers? You're my brothers. You're my sisters. You're my family. Amen. The saddest thing is a sheep without a shepherd. Oh, I'm saved. I'm born again. I gave my life in 1952. I've been in the way ever since. It's time for you to get out of the way. You have to have a pastor. You have to have a church. You have to have a fellowship. You have to be growing. You have to look at when you walk in this place, when you walk in this place and you say, well, you know what? This, you know, there's a piece of trash on the floor. Where's the usher? Where, where's the pastor? I'm going to complain. No, you're at home. Pick it up yourself. Well, you know, the, the, it seems like the carpets are dirty on, on Sunday night. You know, why aren't they vacuuming? I'm going to complain. Are you at home? Yes, grab a vacuum. Well, where's the vacuum? Bring your own. This is your house. Amen. And then when you see someone hurting, and you see someone going through difficulties, you rise up to minister to them. Because that's your brother, that's your sister, that's your family. And we take care of our own, amen? Tell your neighbor, we take care of our own. We're part of the family of God. We're part of the brotherhood, the, the household of faith. We take care of our own. When someone starts a new business, we wait outside, waiting for them to open the door. Why? Because we want to make sure they get our business. We take care of our own. We're family. We pray for each other. We encourage each other. When someone's not here, we call them, we visit them. Why? Because we miss them. Amen. It's not Thanksgiving without them at the table. Amen. But pastor, I know they're my friend, I know they're my brother in Christ, but they're kind of weird. <laughs> so are you. 
but we love you anyway. And we stay on mission, amen? We're here for a purpose. We're here for destiny. You know, can I just share a, a couple of testimonies? Um, we're going to honor God with our offerings in just a moment. And I want to tell you thank you. Because I could preach as much as I, I want, but it is you that takes the voice and takes the message to a farther place. And so we could just be in the constraints of this room, or we could be preaching right now live over the airwaves, over internet, on television, all over the world. And it's because you gave, because God blessed you, because you believe God for increasing your life to be a part of the work of the ministry. Freely we receive, freely we give. Amen. How many believe that this gospel needs to continue to be preached in the farthest parts of the world? Amen. And so I thank God for you. I bless you. I pray God's blessing upon you. You know, you might have a struggle in the area. You might be saying, well, it seems like I can't get breakthrough. I pray that God gives you breakthrough in Jesus' name. You're not going to find someone that is more excited about your future than me. Amen. This last, last week as we were praying for the fathers, there was a family watching at home. The husband had just got finished being angry at the family and Somehow they started listening to the programming. And as we begin to talk about your children being saved, and as the men need to rise up and become heads of their home and pray and believe God for their family, this man was touched so much that he, he turned, he, just with tears in his eyes, he turned to his wife and said, please forgive me. And then he began to pray for his family. This past week I went to a, a meeting where they had the Gideon's uh, Bible Society, they give out Bibles. If you ever go to a, a hotel and you open up a drawer and you see a Bible, it's by the Gideons. And uh, me and my wife were, were there, and uh, they, at the end they said, Pastor, stand up. And they told the Gideon men, he said, listen, put your hand on the pastor. Let's pray for the pastors. And we were in the far corner, and so everybody had their hands placed upon them, but me and my wife were all by herself, and I said, I'm going to put my hands on you. I'll pray for you. But as we were just praying, I felt a hand come on my back. And I heard the man begin to pray that God will bless the church, that God will bless my family, that God will take care of us, that God will increase us, just the blessing of heaven upon us. When they said amen, I turned around just to thank the man, and he looked at me and says, I never thought I'd meet you. I had never seen this man before. He says, I need, to I need to let you know, I'm the vice president of the Gideons in McAllen. I'm head of this camp, and just started going off and telling me about what God is doing in his life. I've been serving the Lord. And he says, I was incarcerated for over 20 years. And when I came out, I went back to the old ways, but one day I turned on the TV and I heard you preach. And I rededicated my life to the Lord that day. And he looked at me and he says, you don't look like a pastor. He said, you look like someone working at Sam's. I don't mind. If I wasn't pastoring, I'd probably be working at Sam's right now. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Amen. 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 You never know what God is going to do. If it wasn't us together, united to see the glory of God, that program would never air. His life would never be changed. He'd never be standing in the place to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Freely we receive, freely we give. Amen. Say it's about the body. It's about the family. We're together for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Look at the person behind you and say, like it or not, you're not getting rid of me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, I have a really good message to preach to you. But I just want to continue. Is it okay with you if we just continue? I'm not going to give you a second part. I'm only going to give you first part. Amen? You have to come back again for a second part. Hold that for me. Hallelujah. 
I, I, I just want to speak some word over you. Well, just the anointing is very, very sweet. Uh, Marie, God bless you. You and your husband stand up. Yes, you. Hallelujah. You guys are doing something new that God has saw. Don't be intimidated. You have heavenly backup. You will prosper. You will learn. You will grow. You might fail in one area, but you're going to grow in another. The thing is never get discouraged. Because even though you might get knocked down here and there, God will rise you up again, and you'll come back stronger than ever. Your business is going to be blessed. Your family is going to be blessed. Your children are going to be blessed. There's going to be a divine balance in your life where both of you all feel like you're doing too much, but there's going to be a divine balance because where you are weak, he is strong, and he's going to give you wisdom to do things that you've never done before. So it's an exciting time for you. It's your season of time. The Bible says that the little shall be great. Amen. You're going to be great in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We pray God's blessing over you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You, don't, you all don't mind if I, if I just prophesy a little bit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Michael, Sierra, stand up. Hallelujah. Hold hands. Hallelujah. God's getting ready to bring you guys closer. First, it was the commitment. You had the, you had the, the initial, my brother, go and, go and have a seat, please. You had the initial uh, attraction and then the commitment, how the Lord, before you were united physically, you were united spiritually. I remember the day that the Lord just brought you guys broken into the altar. And that day when we began to just pour out the love of God upon you. And then to see you guys blessed day by day, your child growing up, the, the, the first of many in Jesus' name. But the Lord is showing you a new way. Because you didn't have the examples of what a godly marriage is like and a godly family is like. Your kids are going to live a better life than you guys lived. Because the love of God is what brought you guys close. The Spirit of God. He, the Lord wants to bless your children's children. And so as God is building, you know, you guys be strong in the Lord. Never get overwhelmed. Never be discouraged. Because God will be there because he's the one that puts you on this path. He's the one that from the beginning said you two are going to be together. Amen. You could pretty much say that God united you at the altar of God. Amen. And so I'm so excited about what God's getting ready to do in your life. It's going to be better and greater than you can ever imagine. Amen. In every area because God has destined you for victory in Jesus' name. Amen. We just pray God's blessing over you in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I know I'm going to get the camera people on all angry at all. Tia. I hear your prayers, says the Lord. And I will not forget about your spiritual heritage, says God. They shall all come to me. For when I opened up your eyes, I didn't just save you. I saved your family. Keep praying. Keep trusting. Keep walking by faith. For you have not seen the glory that I'm getting ready to share, show you shall be greater than you can even imagine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Mountain mover. That's you guys. Your whole family. Addie, you're a mountain mover. The first response is not, it's, you, you kind of know the, 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 the character that God is developing in a person by the first response. Your first response used to be like, I'm overwhelmed, I can't handle it. But now your first response is faith. 
I'm going to move that mountain. I'm going to see it change. I'm going to see the situation go. You know, at first you had to be risen up to that level, but now you're already at that level where God is going to use you to change others. A mountain mover. Don't complain about the mountain. That's what you're called to do. Move it. Amen. Just keep walking by faith. You're going to see so many people that their faith is going to rise up because God had to do a work in your life so that he can impact others as well. You're a mountain mover. Amen. Hallelujah. It's amazing. You just see things over people's lives that the Spirit of God just shows. The Spirit of God just shows. My brother, you're going to put your feet in nations that God calls you to to preach. And it's not going to be long. It's going to come quickly. Come over here. Hallelujah. Stand right here. Lift up your hands to heaven because you need the anointing to take you there. Lord, let your anointing take them there, Father God. Let them do things that he couldn't even dream of. Lord, let your glory fall upon them. And Lord, surround them with power and anointing in Jesus' name. He will never be the same again. Lord, let them step in those lands as a person of authority and power to change the climate, to change the situation. That people will come to the altars. That people will run to the kingdom of God by the gospel preached from his lips, Father God. Use them, mighty Lord, to set the captives free and heal the brokenhearted in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can I, can I come over here again? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. No more running. Get connected. No more running. Stop being offended. It's dry in the place of offense. But the rivers flow. It's a river of love. It's a river of peace. It's a river of joy. And so a flow. Get over it. Amen. Get over it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, why did you say that to her? I didn't say it as Jesus. Did you need to hear that? Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can't just Jesus bless you? Does it have to be a reason? Hallelujah. <laughs> Welcome home. chain right now in the name of Jesus. I break every curse right now in the name of Jesus. I speak victory over his life in the name of Jesus. What no man can do, your spirit will do, Father God. With your sharp sword of your word, break those chains right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Everything must go in the name of Jesus. Let him rise up a new man, Father God. Let him rise up a new man. I come against every devil trying to destroy his life in the name of Jesus. I command you to set him free right now in Jesus' name. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I set him free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. This is family business. Hallelujah. Could I get the worship team? 
go and come on up. Let's go and worship the Lord. Amen. Who wants to worship Jesus this morning? Just lift up your hands. Stand up on your feet. Let's lift up your hands. Just begin to worship him. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Just begin to pray in the spirit of God. Begin to pray in the spirit of God. The Lord is healing. The Lord is restoring. The Lord is changing people's lives right now.